So I'm going to uh, switch our title here so we don't mislead anyone thinking we're doing uh, some Red Dead. Coverage. Yeah, 40 minutes, huh? That's 40 minutes of not playing Red Dead. Ugh. Oh, yeah, and we do have uh, the latest episode about uh, from the Shack cast here. Uh, we do have the latest episode up, episode fives, five, which is dealing with Marvel's Avengers. So I did that, record that on Sunday. Um, and we're going to be hitting you with, with quite a lot of stuff this week, I think, uh, in relation to the podcast. So if you want to follow it on, you know, by subscribing to YouTube or Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whichever platform you enjoy uh, consuming podcasts, uh, I think I got you covered for now, other than, you know, I don't know, there might be other platforms, but trying to cover my bases with, like, some of the big main ones. And this one was actually video. Sometimes I only do audio uh, with the Shack cast, but uh, this one I did some video for. So. Just depends, whatever your preferences are. I might get some more coffee before we, uh, before we rock here. All right, so we got, say, in about 12 minutes or so before that starts. Does anyone have anything PlayStation related that they're excited about? There's something here you think you might hear more about. Like like I said, there's no PS5 stuff. They're not going to talk about pre-orders or hardware or any of that stuff. Okay. Because for me, I, I just feel like we've already gotten everything. Um, unless I'm forgetting something. Or unless I got something to slam dunk on us, or if there's like some sort of update. Some shocking update for PS4. They're just like, hey, we got some DLC for a game that's already out. Or... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. I know they said they were going to talk a little bit about VR today, if I remember reading that right. But, like, does that mean that... Uh, well, they're obviously not talking about new VR equipment, but I feel like if as soon as I dedicate myself to buying, whether it was PSVR or any of the other VRs, as soon as I get one, especially since we're at a generational point here where we're about to shift generations, like, I feel like the next day they would probably announce, like, Hey, we got new hardware. All you idiots that spent a thousand dollars on VR equipment yesterday. Wow, you're all stupid. You know, like, come on, man. Please don't do that to me. But that's how it would go. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, I'm not finding much uh, in relation to what it could be or it's like what's what's planned or Hmm. 
new gameplay footage. Of what? Like, I'm confused. It'd be cool. It'd be cool. What, are they going to show us, like, Cuphead that they got this week? They're like, yeah! Which is cool, because now Cuphead is available across all, well, pretty much all platforms. I mean, all major platforms. It's like, it's on Xbox, it, it went to Switch, it's on PS4 now, it's on PC, like, Eon Stadia? Or it might be coming, I don't know, that might be a thing in the future, but not to get too crazy there. Eight minutes. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, grab some coffee, and be right back. PlayStation coverage. Good Presley. That's our sponsor right there. Our sponsor, our beneficiary, all, all donations go towards his treats. I can't say treats very loud. Otherwise, if he hears me say treats, I think he's getting one. And let's just bark insatiably. Quack, quack. What are you guys doing? Are you guys for real? Quack, quack, quack. You guys have a lot to talk about? Yeah, me too. Whoa! Alright, I'll, I'll catch you guys later.
right, gamers. All right, let's see what PlayStation uh, has to talk about. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not finding much like online. Just trying to see like. I think any of us has known. Everybody's just like, I don't know. PlayStation's gonna talk. And you know, they set expectations so that, you know, we're not whining like little babies, but probably whine anyway, right? Why didn't they talk about the PS5? I feel like they should, but, you know, they also don't want to reveal prices and dates and stuff. I, I feel like between them and Xbox, they're just, they're deadlocked on... I don't want to be the first to do it, because I want to slam dunk whoever does it first. And then they'll you know, drop their price 50 or 100 bucks or something just to, like, screw over the other platform. We'll see. I'm just excited for both. It's gonna have some cool games. Cool platforms. Let's see what we got. Three seconds. Can't touch it. Ah, it hurts. I think I just turned on my PlayStation. Oh, great. It's in rest mode. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Lou Stutter, producer at Toys for Bob, and I'm here to talk to you about Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Crash 4 is a direct sequel to Crash Bandicoot Warped. The devious villains, Neo Cortex and Dr. Entropy have finally escaped their interdimensional prison, leaving an evil scientist-sized hole in the universe. Now they've got their eyes set on not only simply conquering this dimension, but all dimensions. And it's up to Crash and Coco to save the day. Aww. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is the first totally new game in the Crash Bandicoot series in over a decade. So for us at Toys for Bob, we felt that it was important to reintroduce longtime fans, as well as new players, to this amazing franchise. First, we made sure to incorporate the classic tense, precise, and perspective-shifting platforming that we all fell in love with. And oh, man. We wanted to introduce exciting new elements that we can't wait to show you today. Let's start with Insanity Beach. This is where Crash's adventure first started and where we picked things up again in Crash 4. But there have definitely been changes since we first saw Insanity Beach all those years ago. And throughout Crash 4, you'll see those changes to our gameplay and even our art style. Our art teams wanted to take inspiration from not just the original games, but the animated cartoons that inspired those original games all while also delivering bigger, more awe-inspiring dimensions to explore. Throughout Crash 4, you'll see wide open new vistas, new character models, and lots of expressive animations. And with all of that also comes new additions to the platforming, like having the ability to wall run, rope swing, rail grind, and zip line as well. Mm. In the original trilogy, specifically Crash Warped, there were certain moments in the game where Crash would change outfits. Think Crash wearing a biker jacket when riding a motorcycle. That seemed like a natural area for us to expand upon. So we have loaded the game with tons of awesome skins that you can earn and wear throughout the game. These skins are totally cosmetic and a fun way to express yourself while playing the game. And just to be clear, there's no MTX here. Skins are earned by completing different challenges. No and microtransactions. Crash 4 also introduces the Quantum Masks, the powerful protectors of time and space. Crash and Coco will need their assistance throughout the game to tackle the crazy challenges that we're going to be throwing at the player. Whether it's Ika Ika, who gives you the ability to instantly flip your center of gravity at the press of a button, Kapuna Wa, who allows you to slow down the world around you, mm -hmm. That's or cool. Lani Loli, who allows you to phase shift elements in and out of existence. Bending the rules of reality and altering your environment with these new masks is a must. We also can't wait to talk to you about the fourth mask, Akano but that's gonna have to wait for another day. What we can tell you today though, is that Crash isn't the only character you get to take control of during this adventure. For starters, you can play the entire game as Coco. Any level that you can play as Crash, you can also play as Coco. It was also very important for us that she take a more prominent role in the story this time as well. 
But that's not all. We've hey. got a few other characters that you'll get to control at key points in the adventure so that they can provide their own fresh perspectives and new gameplay. Here you can see that you'll be taking control of Neocortex. He's all about using his blaster to change an enemy in his path. In addition to playing as Cortex, we're excited to reveal that for the first time, you'll also get to tail slap your way through crates as Dingo Dial. I repeat, you get to play as Dingo Dial in Crash 4. Now a lot has changed in the years since we last saw Dingo Dial. In huh? fact, he hung up his old flamethrower rocket launcher combo when he decided to retire from a life of villainy and open a diner. Unfortunately for Dingo, fortunately for us, his adventure begins by witnessing the destruction of said beloved diner and oh, getting sucked into another dimension. <laughs> Finally, there's one more surprise I'm incredibly excited to show you today. Oh, wow. The Crash Bandicoot series has always been about finding new and exciting ways to play through the game. In the past, it's been about taking on time trials or discovering all the hidden secrets. Well, for Crash 4, we wanted to bring something brand new to the table. So we teamed up with our friends at Beanox to create a brand new style of play for Crash 4 that we call Inverted Mode. It's our souped up, bump a berry fueled take on a mirror mode. Not only are perspective shifted, but now each of the dimensions are rendered in a new and unique art style that really changes the look and feel of the experience. One dimension could be asking you to traverse through a neon wasteland, while another tasks players with spinning paint all over the environment to see their path forward. We've even got one that feels like an old timey movie with the overcranked camera speed increasing the actual speed of gameplay as well. Oh wow. Once unlocked, players can replay all the game's levels with a totally new and dynamic look and feel. It's an incredibly fun feature that is going to give every player, especially the completionists out there, a reason to revisit each level again. Oh, that's so weird, the underwater vibe. So that's some of the new stuff that we have in store for you in Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Experience the space and time bending madness on October 2nd. That seems pretty cool. Today's state of play is loaded with third party updates for PS4 and PSVR, and some new PS5 gameplay too. Really? Cool. We open the show with an all new look at Crash 4. It's about time, coming to PlayStation 4 on October 2nd. Now let's keep the party going with the latest from Ooh. IO Interactive. Yes! What, what are you guys doing? I'm hyped. Besides, this is your big day. No. Really? Oh, don't worry about that. My aunt. VR? For him, man? I'll call you when I get back to you. I'm not even mad. This could work. That's like super immersive. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is gonna look. I wonder how that's going to work. Oh, the whole... Oh, wow. That's a lot. Okay. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of content in VR. That's got to be good. It has to be. That can't be, like, a horrible VR experience. Or it's, it's going to be... Uh, Wait a minute. No. Braid? No way. Oh, those beautiful hand-painted worlds. 
That's some braid. Good, but frustrating, too. Oh, what a game. This was such a game. One of the best. Ooh, okay. Anniversary. Happy to announce Braid Anniversary Edition. Oh no, I'm old. It's the classic 2008. puzzle where you manipulate time, hand repainted for modern high resolutions. Many areas have been re-envisioned to make them more unique, and it's even more like a living painting with brush strokes animating the world. There are more oh than nine gosh. pixels for each pixel in the original game. There are new animations for smoother motion, Whoa. improved sound and music to enhance the mood, and many hours of developer commentary and interviews on subjects like puzzle design, programming, and visual art. We plan to make it the most detailed commentary in any game ever. So if you want mm. to learn how video games are made, Braid Anniversary Edition will be a really good resource. We hope you'll enjoy the game when it comes out early next year. Next year. Okay, I'm Jan. Yeah, Braid was, that was a unique, one-of-a-kind experience. The Atlas is a mythic adventure set on a mystical island. Let's take a quick tour in this new footage captured from PS5. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Matt Nava from Giant Squid. I'm excited to share more with you today about our upcoming game, The Pathless. The Pathless is an open-world, mythic adventure game set in a vast forest. You play as the hunter. The hunter is a master of archery. She can shoot talismans to fill her dash meter, which allows her to bound across the landscape. Fluid, dynamic movement is at the Ooh. core of the pathless. So the game's unique take on archery is all about timing, not aiming down sights. Okay. This design was critical to making it possible to shoot even Whoa. while moving fast and performing acrobatic maneuvers. You instantly feel as skilled as the hunter herself. Hmm. But it seems empty. With help from the eagle, you can even fly. The bond between the hunter and the eagle is central in the pathos. You can gain altitude while you glide by flapping. You can flap. Gain altitude by flapping. Make sure you pet the eagle to keep it clean and in good flying condition. Oh my gosh. Hey, you gotta rub that fire off. You'll find secrets all over the island, Cute. if you know where to look. And Breath of the Wild vibes, but this, this just Collecting seems like a big empty open world game. Ability to flap. You'll also discover larger puzzles to solve in ancient structures. art style you know everything looks fluid obviously we're probably seeing stuff running at 60 frames now so, I mean it's gonna make games like this look gorgeous the pathless is all about finding your own way forward so unlike most open world games there's no map instead the hunter can use her mask to peer into the spirit world and discover distant landmarks it even shows you where you've been no maps might Getting be the future, gamers. We'll no mini maps. With spirit vision. Weird. Giant cursed spirits, the source of the darkness, will pose a constant threat to you on your quest. They will try to separate you from the eagle.
stay still in the light to avoid detection. Wow. Some pretty animation, though. It looks gorgeous. Just get worried about all these open world you won't games. Be able to take on the cursed spirits the until you've returned light to the obelisks. Are restored, the cursed spirits will be vulnerable. Chase them down through the forest to corner them in a dramatic final battle. Could be fun. So, if it's all about like timing and stuff, it's basically like a rhythm almost a rhythm game. <laughs> like jumping to avoid the ground pounds you're trying to get in that window where you can get a shot but it's kind of cool that it's not about aiming like it's, sometimes that gets a little tiresome all day all the precise aiming you focus more on that than any other form of gameplay to defeat the cursed spirits to bring light back to the world. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the Pathless. Mm. We've only scratched the surface. It's one to There's keep so an eye on. There's so much more to explore and discover. The Pathless is coming out later this year. Thanks for watching. looks rad though like it does look cool but it also looks empty i could be totally wrong next up let's see what's in store for spelunky 2 oh no way Hi, my name is derek you and i'm the creator of spelunky <laughs> for spelunky 2 it was a classic on the sure 360 something that got old fans excited and also brought in new players hmm it was important we didn't change the things that made Spelunky such a unique experience in the first place. <laughs> so many people became fans of the game through their friends and family, and even strangers on the internet. That's one reason why we're adding online multiplayer, Aww. so that more people can play the game together. And I also wanted to include that feeling of community into Spelunky 2 itself to make sure that the game felt welcoming even though it's difficult. In Spelunky yeah. 2, when you do runs and discover new characters, you'll also be building an in-game community and family. Aww, that's I cute. I designed the world of Spelunky 2 to feel much more rich and dynamic than Spelunky 1. It's going to feel a lot more full. Players will be able to explore and interact with it in lots of new ways. For example, you'll be able to ride turkeys and find hidden passageways. And you'll have to choose between branching paths as you make your way deeper into the caves. As a result, the stories players create will have much more texture to them. Even after many, many hours of playing, I still have interesting runs that don't even go past the first area. Huh. Oh it's no! One runs often centered around the shops and how you chose to interact with them. Perhaps. So in ah! Spelunky 2, we've expanded the shopping experience and made them more nuanced and exciting. And also added new characters that can help you or hinder you. Given how amazing the Spelunky community is, it's hard to say how long it will take to find the deepest secrets. But I think the great thing about Spelunky is that the deepest secrets are the ones that even I don't know about. Oh no! There are lots of new things to play with that I hope players can use to push past the boundaries of what we, as the developers, know about the game. Wait, he's cloning dog. I have what? two types of favorite stories from Spelunky fans. First are when people are genuinely surprised by something that happened in the game. 
and second, the ones where people shared a fun experience with friends and family in multiplayer. These are the stories I wanted to expand upon in Spelunky 2. They're really what guided my design choices. After releasing Spelunky, I knew there was a lot more that could be done with the concept in the world. Knowing that possibility was out there is what's been exciting for me and the rest of the team. In a lot of ways, when Spelunky 2 comes out, I want players to experience what we experienced making it. That hmm. feeling that there's something special there waiting for you to discover it. A big thanks to the fans who've waited patiently for us to finish Spelunky 2. It's been a long journey, but I think it's going to be worth it. This looks thanks. charming and fun. The first one was great. Oh my god. Oh no. September 15th. Okay. It's not far off. I'm guessing these might be exclusives? That's kind of strange because I We've remember playing that PS4 on the Xbox you, 360. With a closer look at Genshin Impact. I have no idea what this is. There's something strange over there. Oh Come my on, god. Let's take a look. It's anime girl. Cool. Is everybody just trying to be Breath of the Wild at this point? You can't really blame them, can you? I summon me. I don't even know what this game is though. Is everything I I ugh, is it really everything trying to be Breath of the Wild? This is pretty, pretty neat. I deal in death. If you cannot bring yourself to kill, speak my name. What huh. is this disturbance Weird. to which I awaken? Oh. Huh? Think you can get away? <laughs> like, uh, open world Breath of the Wild style or super old Mario game. Yeah. Spelunky was cool. It was, it was kind of charming in its own way, you know? And very violent, like the way you die in Spelunky. It's silly. Ooh, focus. I get that vibe though, yeah. Oh, why did they? The narration, I don't know. I have a large disconnect with stuff like this. <laughs> That's so weird. That's a cool art style, though. It's very, very unique. I feel like I'm watching an anime rather than a game. Huh. All right, PS4. PS4 one, huh? Interesting. Oh, this is... Oh, it's like 2D and... Oh, it's weird. 2.5D. Man, we're really getting in the platformers, aren't we? A lot of games with really interesting art styles. 
Yeah, this looks cool. Oh, man. I like a good 2D platformer, though. It's got to have that feel, you know? Anime Girl, the game. December of this year. It's time to talk Fug Snacks. Let's check out some gameplay oh, no. footage captured from PS5. It's My the game. invitation is open. Come join me on the island of Fug Snacks. Wow. That's your new lead? Another monster hunt? Elizabeth Megafig is a two-bit con artist! Don't tell me you actually believe this half-baked nonsense. I swear, if you chase this Bugsnax story, you're out of a job! You're the journalist! Lisbeth said you'd be coming. There's a bug snack right over there. Do me a favor and take my snack trap. Uh, stranger, I could use your help. This bunger goes wild for ketchup. Use it to lead the bunger over yonder. Oh boy. I want you to use that journalistic instinct to find ah. out what my no, that carrot. Snack is. Oh no. Feed it to me. The carrot's like an inchworm. He misses Papa. Oh, of course he does. Well, I have a few prototype traps that I could put to use. You're pretty good at stuff, and nobody hates you yet. No, <laughs> nobody hates you yet. And bring everybody back to Snacksburg. I I need to write well, that down. You're pretty good at stuff. Nobody hates you yet. Alive. You just might keep your job. Now get going and try not to fall off a cliff. Are we playing as like a cat or something? I don't know. Something with paws. There's a lot more in store. Let's start with an update on an eagerly awaited PlayStation VR game. Whoa. The force is strong with you. Stop, Vida. I don't understand why you never mentioned that you had the force. I think Hitman to me is the most exciting VR. I worry about stuff like that. That's that's so ambitious. Control! Whatever you do, stay in the light. It's that update. That update. Darkness. Is that Alan Wake? Oh no, it's it's like a crossover. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Ugh. More control. I love control. And the fact that Alan Wake is part of the universe. There's a lot of things here I, I don't identify with. But that's a good thing. There's It seems like there's stuff. There's like little kid games and, and games there for... You know, a lot of different genres, right? This 
So that's ultimately good thing. For some reason that music is really loud. But yeah, there's kind of something for everyone, and we're seeing that from PlayStation and Xbox. We're seeing a lot of sort of kid games, but also you know just like a lot of drastically different genres and artsy stuff. A lot of really artsy games. Indie stuff. Yeah, I was like, all right, when when does it get crazy? So apparently that's that's when it gets crazy. lot of stuff coming to ps4 and they're not they're not saying ps4 and ps5 so i don't two new games headed to ps5 we are the forest shadows a little confusing ghosts running silently between the straight cold lines of a corrupt state Ooh. focus and sumo they count ration manipulate They've taken everything from those they claim to protect. Authority and steel will not Oh, stop. yeah. As I thought. We aren't an invading army. We are wraiths. We bypass defenses Interesting. and strike the heart. Take back what was stolen. Ouch. And the people call us heroes. On the day of night. To others, we are rivals. Oh no, is it gonna be the PvP V future of every game ever? It's a surprise, it's a battle royale. We are all outlaws. Online multiplayer. Legends. Hmm. Interesting. From the day. Very similar to Pokemon. So we're not really seeing too many big like AAA titles. It's really more of like indie titles, uh, third party stuff. Interesting stuff for sure. But yeah, I think we've already seen our, for the most part, our, our big, big games. Let's take a tour of Godfall. We've got new PS5 gameplay for this melee focused action epic launching this holiday. Interesting.
I still don't know what to think of this one. That was look really cool, though. Hello, my name is Keith Lee, and I am the game director for Godfall. On behalf of Counterplay Games, we are very excited to share gameplay with you today yes, and to five, offer you yeah, a glimpse yeah. into the mystical world of Godfall. Today, you'll be seeing extensive gameplay captured on a PlayStation 5 development kit. Please keep in mind that the game is still a work in progress, and some things may change from the final product as we continue to learn and harness the power of Sony's <laughs> next generation console. Please enjoy. So let's jump right into what Godfall is. Yes. Godfall is a looter slasher that features intense action, satisfying moment-to-moment -moment combat, and robust slasher. loot progression systems. You can enjoy the game at your own pace, playing alone, or through online co-op with up to two additional teammates. Godfall is set in a brand new high fantasy universe filled with heroic knights, arcane magic, and forbidden realms. The world is split up into the elemental realms of earth, water, air, and fire. Godfall is a complete package. All loot and gear in the game are acquired or unlocked through gameplay. There are no microtransactions. No waiting for content. That's it's where you get the most applause. One. As you adventure, you'll get to tear through enemies to challenge a mad god who awaits you at the top. You we'll see you knight, at the a top. godlike warrior able to equip valor plates legendary armor sets that transform you into an unstoppable master of melee combat. Throughout your journey, you'll find ancient valor plates lost in time, each with their own characteristics and long history. Now let's talk about gameplay in Godfall. First, our team wanted to do something different. We wanted to combine action RPG loot progression with third-person melee combat to create what we think is a looter slasher. Our game is therefore one part gear-driven and one part player skill-driven. In other words, not only do we want you to find exquisite weapons with powerful loot traits, but we also want you to have that feeling of accomplishment for mastering the wide set of combat mechanics available to you in Godfall. From a combat philosophy perspective, the melee combat in Godfall is intended to be fluid, dynamic, and interactive, embracing offense over defense. More often than not, you'll be facing it's multiple hacking enemies and at slashing. The same time. As a result, you should always be moving and closing the gap on enemies. Also, you dominate the combat space, not the enemies, and the game rewards you for being aggressive. Now huh. that you're familiar with the combat philosophy, so no let's rolling dig around into the and hiding themselves. and <laughs> blocking. In Godfall, there are five weapon classes: the longsword, the dual blades, the polearm, huh. the two-handed warhammer, and the two-handed greatsword. Each weapon class has their own unique movesets and oh, he had a shield from there fast for a combos second. to more strategic, deliberate play. As you defeat enemies in your adventures, you will acquire numerous weapons for each weapon category, each weapon with their own primary and secondary traits. At a later date, we will delve into the weapon classes and how to modify them in greater detail. For now, we'll go over the dual blades and the longsword weapon classes. The dual blades are the fastest weapon class in Godfall, embodying speed, fluidity, and mobility. The dual blades are exceptional against soft, unarmored targets or single targets. You can perform a combo by executing four consecutive light attacks. The dual blades heavy attack is a spinning blade cyclone. The blade cyclone can also be used as a finisher at the end of your light attack combo. So what are the signature moves for the dual blades? As you build up charge, you can also activate inner focus, which is unique to the dual blades, which inflicts massive damage in a short period of time. There's also a mortal coil, 
where you can throw your blade into oh, an man. enemy, pulling the enemy towards you, like pulling a cable. That's cool. Now let's switch to the longsword weapon class. Longswords are balanced weapons, embodying crisp damage and simple cooldowns without needing a lot of elaborate combo setups. Similar to dual blades, longswords have their own four hit light attack combo. Then there's the heavy attack finisher, which can be used at the end of your light attack combo. There are three signature moves for the longsword class. There's Spectral Flurry, which cannot be interrupted and deals high damage to multiple nearby targets. Then there's Spiral Technique, which eviscerates all enemies in a straight fixed path. Notice there's a white flash after a longsword swing called a timing attack. If you press the shield button exactly at the same time, you'll perform a devastating shield uppercut with your longsword. The shield is a core part of Godfall. It's available to you throughout the entire game. You can always block incoming attacks with your shield. If you press the shield button at the right time, you can also parry an attack. You can perform a light attack after a last second shield block to counter attack with a powerful shield strike. The shield is great not just for defense, but also offense. You can aim and throw your shield which will hit multiple nearby targets. That's cool. If you tap the shield button just as you catch your shield, you can perform a powerful wave attack. You can double tap the shield button to petrify enemies. Why does the shield sound like the and coolest course, thing to me? You can perform an R3 ground finisher on enemies that were knocked down to the ground. That's always nice. Something just looks like weird and clunky, like a lot of missing attacks and stuff. Like gauging the distance wrong. And then, and then there's like a crosshair, but like is it also locked on to the enemy? Because we saw a circle on the enemy at one point. So it's like, how, how's all that working? We hope you enjoyed our first walkthrough video of Godfall running on the PlayStation 5. We also want to thank all the fans for their endless support since our initial reveal back in December. We have a few more surprises coming down the road, such as details on loot and progression, and are eager to share more with you on our way to launch this holiday season. We hope that you will join our Godfall community on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you. Doesn't seem like my kind of game, but it, it definitely looks cool. Something that would be That's fun to wrap. try. We hope you enjoyed this peek into the future of PlayStation. See you next time. Huh. Interesting. Uh, well, I think I was more surprised than I thought I was going to be. Stuff looks really cool. They got some pretty interesting and artsy games and some games that have me scratching my head, like some of these exclusive or what's going on in relation to that. Oh, wait, that's it? <laughs> it's always fun to read the comments. That's it? Oh, my God. Managing those uh, expectations, I guess. So that's part of the game.
Yeah, so it seems kind of cool. Uh, oh, man. Reload. AWE uh, for control. This is the second expansion for control. August 27th on PS4. I wonder when for PC and Xbox. They led with the strong stuff and ended with the weaker stuff. Yeah, which is kind of weird, because, like, um, why is it weird? Yeah, because usually they try to end with something strong, and, like, Godfall, maybe for some people, is just like, oh, my God, but to me, maybe I was, maybe I was thinking it was going to be something even crazier. Yeah, I would think you'd want a sandwich effect, right? Yeah, because they start off with Crash, which I felt was, like, really strong, right? Because that's, like, something that's uniquely PlayStation. And then they, like, they always have these games where they're, like, multi-platform, but, like, they try to pitch it in a way that it's like, ah ha, ha we're the best, though, play it here! And, and so it confuses you because they absolutely will not show any labeling other than PlayStation. So even for the Control DLC, which we know is coming out for everything, but it's possible PlayStation might get it first. Because I think that happened with Xbox. They, they had it for like a month or more. But I had it on PC as soon as it launched, so it was like, it was a weird exclusive that was strange. And exclusives just rub me the wrong way. I just don't like it. And and the more we've learned about Marvel's uh, exclusive content from Marvel's Avengers, uh, like Spider-Man being locked on PS4 only, it gets a little silly. It gets a little crazy. Yeah, so I felt that was a little... I, I was surprised by some things, and there were some things that looked really cool. But, like, most of them just look like little indie games that you're going to play for, like, four hours, you know, and, you know, you either beat them or you don't, and, and then you move on. And a lot of it's, like, a lot of them were just PS4 games, but, like, they didn't make it clear as to whether, you know, because they are coming out next year or later this year, like, they weren't clear about, like, hey, you could also play this on the 5, you know? So, like, be excited if you're... Planning on getting a five, you'll you'll be able to. So like they they weren't clear on because like I'm I'm fully a, a planning on like abandoning my PS4 for the most point, most part. I might I might put it on an, another TV in my room or something, and just not have it in here, because I I want to be able to you know just have pretty much the consoles that I stream from here. Nothing nothing extra. But yeah, that's going to be interesting uh, to see some of those games, how they grow. Uh, I guess we'll get back to some Red Dead then. Uh, we'll, we'll pivot back to that. I think this was worth checking out, but I was, I, I was n really just not expecting anything. And so I guess because my expectations were so low, I'm, I'm leaving with sort of slightly higher, <laughs> more medium, medium expectations. Wait, when did this happen? Bully 2 is coming to Series X, PlayStation 5, and PC in early 2021. Watch the all-new trailer here. This was not part of the state of play. Why are they hashtagging it state of play? Hang on. I'm just, I'm browsing Twitter. Is this real? No, that's fake. That's, yeah, that's fake. Um, whatever account this is, what a... What account is this? No, not a fan. Not helpful. Not credible. I was like, that's that was not aired. Uh, okay. So Twitter live.
Hangonfall just doesn't appeal to me. Which is strange, because I like looter shooters, but like looter slasher, I don't know, maybe if it had more intricacy, but it just seems like a big hack and slash, like just aimlessly. Like it didn't, I wasn't picking up on too much. Like Sekiro, Dark Souls, Ghost of Tsushima, Neo, any sort of like intricacy in the combat that would keep me entertained for a long period of time. Because just mashing square or, or triangle or something, just alternating little combos, is that's going to bore me at some point. So I got to I got to be very picky about what I'm what I'm choosing to play, right? All right, let's get uh let's get Red Dead going up. Prepping for Red Dead. Scene we want to do. 